Hey, good morning internet. So, yesterday the track bike went. It was uh, collected by the chap uh, in the morning and that's all good. So, I'm starting to feel like the garage is... I'm getting it back a little. I mean, it's been a bit of a jam-packed um, condition for quite a while with all of the spares and bikes we've got in. Uh, but now I just feel like we're getting it back a bit. Yeah, there's been bikes and parts all over the place and uh, it really has just been a been quite a mess. So we still haven't heard from TT Motorcycles, but you know, this is a bank holiday weekend now, so I don't expect to hear from them until next week. That's fine. Um, so I think we are going to, going to uh, make a start on the uh, Blue 600. And I've been thinking about it, and I think the, the stripes are going to be particularly difficult to put on. I'm not saying we're not going to do it, we're definitely doing it. But uh, I thought, well, maybe I should use some of these panels that I've got in stock. Um, so I think that's what we're going to do. So this morning, I'm just going to pull out some of the other panel work that we've got. I mean, you know, don't expect it to look very nice. Uh, it's been badly painted, but there's a few issues on the 600 at the moment where uh, whilst uh, I'm quite happy to do the plastic repairs, um, the back of the fairing, uh, where the indicators sit on the front, um, has been really quite badly damaged. And the resulting repair that somebody has done uh, has been to fill with, um, you know, the coarse fiberglass filler uh, the, the stuff that you can really see the strands of fiberglass in, all at the back, and they've completely covered the holes up uh, for the second pin, because uh, there's there's two locators. Well, there's one for the for the front indicators. There's one which is, the cables come through, and then there's a back one which is a locator for the uh, mounting. So here, like this. So. Um, I think I'm going to have to either, well, I'll definitely have to recut those holes, or I seem to think that the black one, well, it's black at the moment, might be in better condition. So we're going to have a bit of a look at that and also pull out the other panel work that I've got. And there might be some broken lugs here or there, but it uh, could well work out better to do that. Because also what it will then give me is a great... Um, template if you like when I do come to apply the decals uh, I can make sure that they're going exactly where they should go so let's start pulling them out and have a look okay thank you okay so this is the spare nose fairing that we've got and uh, well straight away I can see that the you know it might not be in a as good a condition as I thought. Uh, straight away I can see that the indicator holes on this one have been filled and you know, completely patched up on the one side. They are in there on the other side though. Um, I think generally it does seem in slightly better condition I suppose. You, can, you, you can tell at the back where where the repairs have been done. Um, there's lots of signs of filler. I mean, you know, there's always going to be, but I just thought it might be as well to do this one. And uh, like I say, then at least we've got a template for, you know, the, the, there's a lot of stickers. Uh, you can see, so they, the stickers are still under there. They, you can see them now. So I think what I'll do is, Take it right back. Um, I've got some more sanding discs coming today. Got a really good deal for the sander for the discs, well, the, the pads from um, Amazon. 60 pads for the uh, mouse sanders um, for less than £11. So, you know, I might go through them quite quickly, but it's usually about 15 for a tenner from uh, the likes of home base so yeah that should be all good so i think maybe maybe that's a maybe that's one to try i'm not too sure what we're going to do about the back 
but you know I'm happy to drill that out. Okay, let's uh, pull some other panels out and have a look. Oh, so... Okay, so this has been repaired quite a bit. Yeah, so it looks like it's split in half and it's broken there. You know, and the, you can see it's quite an extensive. Can you see that there? Quite an extensive repair patch in there that's uh, been been applied, uh, top and bottom. So yeah, so maybe, maybe not. Well, well again, it's been repaired, but this this, this repair has held. Oh, a, bit of, a bit of damage there. Well, that'd be easy enough to, to uh, patch there with the thing. Oh yeah, that's a bit nasty. I'm not so sure I could do that. Yeah, maybe if I heat that up, you know, I could get it flat and then fill it, possibly. Both both retainers are gone away. Now it's damaged there. Not great. Ah well. Okay, so this has been repaired, but at least it's still got, well, okay, that's a bit of a bodged up one, but it's still got some retaining lugs. So, you know, so maybe that's a can-do, and I think we've got another side panel somewhere as well, so, you know, probably get away with that one. So, the left-hand one, no lugs. Bit of a break there. That's a shame. No lugs. Well, that's in nice condition. I don't know. Maybe I could see if I can get replacement lugs. Maybe that's the thing. Um, I'll have to go have a look on, on uh, well, maybe Amazon. Uh, probably eBay. Be better. Nothing else in there of any, any worth. I've also got two fuel tanks. So what do you think? Should I do the fuel tank that's on the bike? Or... You know, because I'm going to take it right back to bare metal. So let's have a look at the best of the uh, two fuel tanks that I've got. Let's just clear this up. Then we have... Right. So... This is definitely the better of the two tanks. Um, that back edge doesn't look too bad. I think that's the thing that most concerns me here. Mm, okay. Uh, one of the guys that came to view the bike wanted to buy one of the tanks from me, but you know, they're getting more difficult to get hold of, aren't they? So it might be best that I just keep hold of both of them. Um, oh yeah, there's lots of rust in there, but it doesn't look like too bad. It, just, it doesn't look like really bad, bad rust. So what I might do is give it a swill out first, put some petrol in it, just to see if we can get any leaks. But yeah, maybe that's an option. Should we have a look at the other one? Well, I, I, I think this is I found this as well. So this looks quite good. I mean, yes, the one problem that it does have is, well, I don't know, should that be there? So the one on the bike, the one on the bike now definitely doesn't have this cutout. So I'm, I'm not too sure what that was for. Maybe, well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it fitted something. Yeah, okay, so it's uh, definitely in a worse condition, but again, it might just be surface rust, I don't know, we'll have to, uh, it's really quite, oh look, there you go, so somebody's Badly repaired the tank at some stage. It's obviously gone through there. Popular point on these 
That side looks okay. So we would definitely have to get this repaired properly before we could use it. So it, I think in that sense, it would be the green one. So we use this project. Again, that's, you know, there. Let's get the grinder on it and see what we, well, the um, sander on it and see what we can see. Okay, well, that's a good start. Uh, great, okay. So I thought we'd have a little go on the uh, petrol tank, you know, make a start. Just see if it uh, looks like it's going to be rusted through on those bottom edges. Um, and if it is, we'll have to consider then whether we do the blue one or not. I quite like the idea of doing all of the spare pan work because it leaves the blue one on the road, doesn't it? You know, so it can, uh, I can still take it out. Look at these. So, huh, 10 quid. You know, 60 pounds or pounds. Brilliant, that is. Okay, let's crack on. Okay, uh, not great, let's have a look. So I don't know if you can see that. We've got two definite holes here and here where it's gone through. Yes, yeah, so we're definitely gonna have some leaks there. Um, I haven't got that one down enough yet, or that one. This side, Looked a bit worse, but is actually no holds at all. Maybe that's just about to go there. No, maybe not. Uh, again, we need to take some more off, really. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's definitely so. It's definitely got to go away for a repair, hasn't it? So the next thing is to find out who does petrol tank repairs and where can I send them. It would seem to be a bit of a waste to get rid of it just for that. Um, like we saw on the black tank, somebody had repaired that themselves and you know, pretty much, a, well, I don't know, some sort of resin was underneath it, so. But I would like to get it done properly. I can't imagine there's any uh, trace of petrol in it, not a sausage. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to get that done. Okay, never mind. to get some paint strip. I've just checked and I haven't got any left. 
I've got a little bit left, but I've certainly not got enough to do any of the panels at all. Why am I going to do paint stripper rather than just sand it down with the uh, little sander? Because there's absolutely tons of paint on it. The tank, as I don't know, maybe you could see, under the green was red. Well, under the green was primer, and then under the primer was red. And I don't think that was like um, a base primer. So that's obviously been a few colours in the past. This obviously has been painted badly black, but under the paint, under the black paint, there's blue paint. Now, I don't think they ever made a blue GPZ600R. In fact, I'm pretty sure they didn't. So it's going to, uh, that's going to be over something. So I think I, I will just spend hours and hours and hours and go through a lot of sanding pads. So I'm going to get a uh, paint stripper and do it properly. Um, everything's going back to bare plastic or bare metal anyway. I don't want to risk any sort of reaction when I put the new paint on, as I've had in the past. Uh, the Zephyr, I think, caused me a few problems. And the front mud guard on the Transalp, to be honest, when I did that way back when. Um, that reacted really badly and I had absolutely no idea why so yeah so it's coming back down there are some obvious signs of damage on this which I've already mentioned that there is quite bad but again the crack closes up really nicely and it'll be a good place to patch on the back there so uh, I think that'll be fine um, as I say you can still see the decals uh, I think they are. I don't think they're just where... I mean, some... I don't know. Well, we won't know until we've got the paint off, will we? But I suppose it could be where their decals were pulled off. But then... I don't know. I think they've gone straight over them. But we'll see. Uh, I'll say that needs repairing. That's really good. So we've got the two holes that side. Bottom edges are really good. A little crack in the... In a... Um, air intake there which needs sorting uh, the, top, the very top there which sits behind the screen that's got a, a that's sort of bust off a bit there so I'm sure we can do something with that um, but I think on the whole this is certainly better condition than the one that's on the blue one now so uh, I think we are going to be using that um, I don't think I'm going to persevere with the sander at the moment. I think it's just going to waste all the sanding discs, to be honest with you. I'm going to go away now and research where I can get the fuel tank, hopefully somewhere quite local, uh, where I can get the fuel tank um, refurbished. Now, it might well be that they dip it first to take all the paint off. So, why am I going to bother? You know, Why am I going to waste all my time with paint stripper or sanding discs? Let's see what they say first. I would imagine they will. Um, so, you know, so they can see the actual quality of the metal underneath all of the paint. So, yeah. All right. Well, that's it for today. Uh, just a quick one, really. Um, I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye.